Good afternoon and welcome to the 2022 State of the University Address. This year I join you from UMass Amherst. UMass Amherst is one of the country's original land-grant universities, founded in 1863, with its first classes offered by four faculty to 56 students. Today, 1,400 faculty serve more than 30,000 students on this campus and conduct groundbreaking research within a $220 million research enterprise. I want to thank Chancellor Subhaswamy and the UMass Amherst community for hosting me today and congratulate them on their sustained success over the last decade. Among that progress is the recent announcement of $95 million in public-private funding to enhance UMass Amherst information and computer science programs and facilities. $18 million of that was a generous gift from the chairman of our Board of Trustees, Rob Manning and his wife Donna, and $75 million was a commitment from the Baker administration. Governor Baker's service will come to an end early next year. Our harmonious and productive relationship with him over the last seven years has served UMass and the Commonwealth well. On behalf of the entire UMass community, I want to thank Governor Baker for his partnership and for his brilliant leadership of our state. Last year, I spoke about the enormous contributions the university made to the battle with the COVID-19 pandemic. Since then, as we've entered the extra innings of that battle, UMass remained at the forefront of the state's efforts while managing the ongoing disruption in our campuses here and at UMass Boston, UMass Dartmouth, UMass Lowell, and UMass Chan Medical School in Worcester. As we approach the end of the academic year, the student experience on our campuses is currently as close to normal as it's been in over two years. Our enrollment remains steady with the support of our partners in the Massachusetts Congressional Delegation, as well as the Baker Administration and the Massachusetts Legislature, led by Senate President Spilka, Speaker Mariano, and their colleagues in the House and Senate, we have emerged on sound financial footing. Our success is also attributed to the strong leadership of our Board of Trustees and our Chancellors, Chancellor Subhaswamy, Torres Orozco, Fuller, Maloney, and Collins as well as the hard work, dedication, and yes, the sacrifices of our students, faculty, and staff. Your commitment to public health best practices, to taking the necessary steps to keep each other safe is a shining example of how the UMass community always rises together to face challenges and inspire others. On behalf of the university, I thank you. As we hopefully transition to the endemic phase of COVID-19, we must acknowledge the challenges that will outlive it. For instance, the pandemic only highlighted the already mounting student mental health crisis on college campuses across this country. According to the American College Health Association, more than 80% of college students last fall reported moderate or high stress in the previous year and 30% sought mental health services, both up significantly from pre-pandemic levels. We've certainly seen evidence of these trends on our campuses. In response, I've asked system and campus leadership to direct additional resources to student mental health, including expanding access to counseling and increasing well-being, mindfulness, and peer support programming. And to support this effort, I've made student mental health a priority in our state budget request. UMass is well positioned to lead in this area and we're implementing innovative strategies to support our students. As one example, here at UMass Amherst, the campus has partnered with the Benson Henry Institute and Home-Based Veteran and Family Care, two subsidiaries of Mass General Hospital, to offer courses where students learn mind-body practices and self-care while receiving credit towards their college degrees. We will continue to focus on strategies on all of our campuses to ensure that students have the support that they need to pursue their educational and personal development goals. Despite the many challenges of the pandemic, I am proud to report that the University of Massachusetts remains one of the most successful university systems in the country. All of our campuses are nationally ranked by U.S. News & World Report 
and for the sixth consecutive year, we generated more than $600 million in research expenditures, $687 million to be exact. We are also becoming more diverse, with 40% of our undergraduates now students of color. And our contributions to the Commonwealth workforce remain unmatched. Last year, one in five bachelor's degrees awarded in the state came from a UMass campus, and we launched UMass Global, which will expand online education opportunities for adult learners in the Commonwealth and beyond. While we expand opportunities for adult learners, we also want to create early college opportunities for Massachusetts high school students, which will lower the cost of college for them. UMass has recently received a grant from the Smith Family Foundation to scale up high quality early college across Massachusetts. We look forward to building the partnerships needed to succeed in this important endeavor. Finally, we had our greatest fundraising year in the history of the university. Just last fall, generous alumni and friends committed nearly $250 million through the three largest gifts in our history, including a $50 million gift to all five campuses by Rob and Donna Manning, and a $175 million gift from the Morningside Foundation to endow the UMass Chan Medical School. Our endowment now stands at $1.2 billion, a quarter of which directly supports financial aid for students. In summary, UMass remains on a solid foundation, and we are laser-focused on our mission to deliver high-quality education, conduct research, and provide service to our communities. As a public research university, those mission-specific goals, education, research, and service, derive from our founding here in Amherst. The Mall Act of 1862 established land-grant universities to, and I quote, promote the liberal and practical education of the industrial classes in several pursuits and professions in life, end quote. The land-grant act intended to provide education to those for whom it had not been previously accessible and to allow young people to make greater contributions to society. In other words, land-grant universities like UMass were designed to democratize higher education. And so I believe we have a special obligation to ensure that the very democratic principles upon which we were founded are preserved for future generations. Why is it important to remind ourselves of that now? Because never in my life, from my time as a student at UMass in the wake of the Vietnam War, through my 14 years of service in the United States Congress and 15 years in leadership at UMass, have I felt that democracy was more threatened by interconnected forces, political polarization, exacerbated by social media and echo chambers, disinformation and misinformation intended to further divide us, declining media literacy, exploited by extreme partisans, and an anti-science movement sparked by climate deniers and accelerated by COVID-19 conspiracy theorists, political violence defended and normalized even inside the halls of the United States Capitol, and of course, the democratic country of Ukraine invaded and attacked by Russia, presumably because of its embrace of Western democratic ideals. These are threats to democracy, and public research universities, spawned at a time when our nation was ruptured by civil war, must do our part to address them. As a public research university, we must not let our discomfort with conflict diminish our commitment to open debate and exploration of difficult topics. We must continue to pursue truth and use our positions to defend facts when they are threatened by misinformation, demagoguery, or willful ignorance. We must vigorously defend our community from acts of racism, eliminate practices that contribute to systemic racism, and support and elevate the voices of our students and scholars who are working towards a more just society. We must continue to invest in scientific discovery and science education, while also investing in and promoting humanities research and education, which is vital to informed debate and reasoned expression of ideas. We must defend the free press from both government and corporate influence and actively teach media literacy. We must work to increase voter participation among young people as we are doing through the All In Campus Democracy Challenge. We must amplify the work 
of our social scientists who are illuminating the dangers of voter suppression, gerrymandering, and other political tactics that degrade a representative democracy. And finally, we must protect faculty, scholarship, and curriculum from political intervention and promote higher education as critical to society and the advancement of knowledge. The role of the public research university in preserving democracy is clear, and the time to recommit to the fundamental principles of democracy that undergirded our founding as a land-grant university is now. In doing so, I am encouraged and emboldened by UMass students. Our students are engaged, educated on the issues of the day, committed to making a difference and committed to action. Through their vision, I'm reminded of my colleague and friend, the late civil rights leader, John Lewis, who I served with in the United States Congress. Shortly after he passed in 2020, the New York Times published an essay he had written to be released posthumously. The essay was titled, Together You Can Redeem the Soul of Our Nation. In it, John was speaking to young people. He wrote, quote, democracy is not a state, it is an act and each generation must do its part to help build what we called the beloved community, a nation and world society at peace with itself." End quote. I ask you to join in this act, to participate in our democracy, to join the All In Campus Democracy Challenge and the UMass Votes Campaign, and to recognize the power we have as UMass, as the Commonwealth's public research university, to help build a society more at peace with itself. Thank you for listening, and thank you for everything you do for the University of Massachusetts.